this video, we're gonna start off with something just a little bit different. I thought that I'll just put all my vlogs for this month all in just one giant video, or it's not even that long, but in, a, in just one video. I started thinking about how easy this would be if I just did this for the rest of the year because I have a backlog full of just footage that I'd never used and I feel like if I try to make a video for each and every little thing, I kind of get overwhelmed thinking that like it's not even good enough or there's not even a lot of stuff going on here to make it even a video. But I figure it's 2024. We'll see how this goes. If you don't know me yet, my name is Julian Guevara. I am a portrait and wedding photographer based here in Southern California. And here's my Instagram if you want to just go through it. All right, so January starts off with an engagement session. I met this couple a couple months back at a wedding showcase in downtown LA and they won a free engagement shoot with me. So the first week of the new year, we met at the beach in Malibu. One, two, three, come on. January is usually my slow season, so I thought I'll fit them in here. That would be a perfect opportunity for me to get new work in. Yeah, we had the perfect weather. It was a perfect day. The sunset was gorgeous, and these two like looked really amazing with each other. The idea for the shoot was the bride wanted to look like a mermaid. Um, she's super into like the ocean and stuff, so her dress resembles that. They were so stoked to get into the water, so I was so stoked for that because every time I'm like, we have to get in the water. Like, the water's here. Let's get in there. And they were so down for it. It was January, by the way. And then release. They just look at each other. Oh. Beautiful. I think we got it. Canon R5 got dumped in the ocean by just a wave that just came like like chest high. So um, yeah, the camera still works. I've done a couple more shoots since then, so we, we're still good. All right, so a couple of weeks after, my friend Raul from Drifting on Memories reached out. He actually came to the studio to pick up a backdrop that was right here. They were gonna use it for their for their dogs uh, birthday party. So it was a perfect backtrack for them. I need to fill this wall now with the new with the new uh, with the new piece. He invited me to come out to meet Guzmano Cesaretti. And he if you don't know who he is and your first time hearing about him from me right now, he is an incredible photographer and artist. He came to the USA from Italy during the 1970s. I'm not too sure what year he showed up, but I know he lived in Chicago for a couple of months, working at a spot, living at his co-worker's house. He had an, another job opportunity, but it would have required a lot more uh, dedication to that said job. I'm not sure what it was. His co-worker, I believe, told him, hey, like if you want to do photography, do photography because if you are going to work at that spot you're not going to be a photographer so he followed his heart he decided to not take this job and just work for his job he decided to go photograph and be in his dark room developing those photos and try to like show that he is a photographer and for someone to do that in the 70s not even from the usa and try to make it in the usa is freaking crazy um, not sure how he caught wind of Southern California, Los Angeles lowrider culture. He finds himself in East LA, surrounded by graffiti on the walls, artwork on the walls, uh, lowriders, music, just culture. And he says in the podcast that um, he just loved how vibrant and how happy and how like energetic everyone was. And um, he feels like he could get lost in the crowds because, um, you know, I guess they didn't look at him as another American coming into the community. And um, 
I thought that was really cool that he followed his dreams and became the person he is today. And I had the honor of meeting him and hearing his story firsthand. So if you are interested in learning more about him and uh, hearing the Laurel Rider's perspective of his story, uh, check out uh, Drifting on Memories podcast for that episode. I'll link it below. Also, um, just check out his work. Uh, podcast show. I'm here with Guzmano Cesaretti um, here in uh, his studio. Um, this is a big deal for me. South Pasadena. South Pasadena. This is a huge deal for me. This is this man is so admirable for me. I'm a little starstruck. <laughs> it's been a while since. Uh, I, why did they? Why? Because they had nobody kind of coming around asking, they, you know, if they could take pictures, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tattoo and Mosca were here, and they said that when they wonder who is this you were surprised at the racism that right, went around right. in the united states right and you saw a community where they they made something out of they made beauty out of something of their surroundings right, yeah, right. right. There, it was it could have been a prison yeah um and i think that's the same with lowriders you just look. yeah the eight tracks eight tracks the car mm -hmm. This donut right here, they don't make these kind of steering wheels. They haven't made these since the 70s, you know? Yeah. This interior right here is a, a custom interior. Everything. Yeah, and this, all this stuff here. To somebody who's who's a, a lowrider enthusiast, they, we see this picture and we could dissect all these things right here. Yeah. The, the interior, the A-track, the A-track player, the donut, you know, steering wheel. Yeah. You know, the... Everything. So it thank you, nice. Guzmano. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. For you know, it's all in East LA. See. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd never seen anything like it before, right? When you first saw the the graffiti, you were yeah. You were very curious as to what those symbols meant. Yeah. Yeah. And you you met Chaz, yeah. who showed you around and explained all the the writings to yeah. you. Yeah. And then all the graffiti. Yeah. You were able to really appreciate so it. So this one right here, it's all this is graffiti, but it also has a Yakano boy right yeah, in front yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. And it looks like, I'm trying to read the neighborhood, I can't yeah. really see it, but I know, oh, it says right here, East LA, okay. Yeah. So, uh, when you capture the graffiti like this, Guzmano, and the child like that, mm -hmm. where it was, oh, it's Garrity Lomas, okay. So, um, you know, what? did you want to capture it like this to kind of explain the... No, no, it was good for me because... You know, the, this is the guy that he lives here, and this is the, the writing that are in, you know. In his home, in his around home. his home, yeah. yeah. And this is a little boy just kind of maybe yeah. playing on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very But nice. it's so significant, though. But it was nice to me, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when in I, the book. I, said, I took a picture, and then he said, take a picture of me, yeah. take a picture of me. Yeah, oh, he said, take a picture <laughs> yeah. of me, yeah. yeah. All right. Because yeah. he's... I own a book for from his, and I I even got his sign, so yeah, I'm really cool. excited. That's one of the housing projects. Is that the Maravillan? The actually, um, Rigo, who owns the Maravillan, he's from Project Sixty Nine. Cool, thank you. I'm just absolutely stoked that I got to meet a living legend before um, before he's no longer with us. He's up there in this age, and I don't think uh, he remembers much. So um, it was an honor for me to be there with Raul and Drifting on Memories to document his voice at this moment in time and just hearing his stories. So definitely check out his work and check out Drifting on Memories. And then lastly, um, towards the end of January, um, I was following one of my favorite like live performers or artists uh, named Mark Rubier. He's such a talented and i think i would want to say like i don't know him personally but like 
I feel like he's such a genuine like human being. So I've been following him. He was on tour doing like Mark Rubier or Loop Daddy does America. <laughs> and he started off in New York and then every other day he would play a show in a different city, slowly going east to west to LA. And I had my, I had a weekend open and I decided to go take the family to go see the show live. And then you get the lighter, don't got a lighter, need to borrow a lighter from a friend. Got the lighter now, it's almost 420 in this bitch, time to put it to the mouth, ignite, inhale, it's a motherfucking smoke there. Yo, I'm smoking now. Now I'm smoking weed and smoking it in my lungs now. Yo, it's traveling now. Through my body now, through my nervous system, bloodstream, oh wow. Yo, I'm feeling hot, I said I'm feeling cold. I'm hypersensitive to temperature, I've been told. This is fucked up, I don't know what to do. I'm feeling high and yo, I gotta get it back to school. Roll that shit, up, 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 roll that shit. And there was so many people here. There was like, like I was hoping I'm gonna show up, get front row seat, and I'm gonna photograph the heck out of this. Like this is gonna be so amazing. But as I showed up, the crowd was so huge. There was no way for me to like walk around. I didn't want to be a rude person and just like, let me go in there. I have a camera, so I'm going to just like step to the front and just block everyone's view. I didn't want to do that, so but I kind of got as close as I felt comfortable and just vibed out. And I did take some photos, not the best, but so I'm not sure how these photos are going to look. I have not looked at them and I doubt there are anything. He was kind of playing in dappled lighting, so I knew the photos weren't going to be good. So I decided to put the camera down and just be there in that moment and just enjoyed my time, enjoyed, enjoyed everything. It was really fun and it gave me so much energy and inspiration to to keep doing what I'm doing. So yeah, that was the month of January. This was kind of like a test run to see how this feels. And I'm trying not to like overthink these videos. I'm trying not to just like create this as a business platform or anything. I, like I was even thinking about it just yesterday. I'm like, why do I even want to share this stuff with you? Like, why do you even care? And I don't know if you care or not, but um, if you do, thank you. If you don't, thank you. I know we all have our own lives to live and we're all like just trying to make this dream work. And um, I'm at the point right now where I'm just like, I'm doing these videos for me as a visual diary. And uh, at the end of the year, hopefully I feel like I'm able to look back at these videos and just feel like, yeah, it was a good year. Cause a lot of times we forget all the progress we've made. We started, like a, like a lot of us, we started off with nothing. We had no connections. We don't have any camera. We want that, we want this, we want this. But like a lot of times, like we forget to slow down, enjoy this journey and just like let it all happen. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. It's, uh, I think it's good for me, I feel. But yeah, before I go on too much, um, I really appreciate you making it to the end. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here and thank you for being you. Hopefully I see you again. All right, much love.